Let me take you through this interesting scenario for this Helix LT. Everything here has to do with the expression pedal. So you notice, if I press hard enough there on the toe switch, we do get movement on that switch for the expression pedal. And as I do the same thing, you can see it turn the block on and off there, or switching between expression pedal one and two. So that's good, but the issue comes in with the actual sweep of the expression pedal. So as I move the pedal, we should see the position move a little bit. Stay in focus there, but you notice as I move the pedal, we get no change in the position percentage there. So there's some sort of issue going on here with that pedal sweep. Now the other place that we can actually test this out is uh, kind of like the hardware test mode of the Helix. And we can access it um, by using a foot switch combination as we power the unit up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to power it off. And we're going to hold down foot switches three and four. So one, two, here's three, here's four. I'm going to hold both of these down as I power the unit up. And then we'll have a selection screen to uh, choose the hardware test mode. So now you see we're at a close-up of this screen. There's a number of selections. We'll select the top one uh, using the uh, joystick. And I can just press it. UI test. And now I have a whole selection of options that are shown here. Each one pretty much corresponds to a control on the Helix. Uh, just as an example, you can see my finger here on these rotary encoders. As I turn it, it'll light up green to show that it's receiving information. And it pretty much works that way for uh, all of the the foot switches as well, so you can see them light up as I press it. You see them light up there. But of course the main one that we're interested in is seeing any activity there on the pedal. And As I move the pedal, of course there's no um, activity there. But again if I press the toe, there you see the green light right up here that's me pressing the toe of the pedal but of course there's no movement on the sweep of the pedal now at this point we have to get in to the helix so we'll just uh, disassemble it real quick let me show you uh, the way to do that first thing uh, that I found the best is to go ahead and take off these kind of rubbery plastic side panels and they're held on with one two three four five five little uh, screws that have a hex head and I found a two and a half millimeter hex head works the best for these. So I'm just going to take uh, this side panel off and then I'll take the other one off just the same way. Now you see I've flip the unit around, I'm going to do the exact same thing. Five hex screws to take off this side panel. You notice though that there is a hex screw here and that's the adjustment for the resistance of the expression pedal. Uh, you don't have to worry about touching that. The side panel will come right off over that. The rest of the disassembly is going to uh, take place just with a Phillips head screwdriver. Now before you flip the unit over, uh, easiest thing to do is take out the two screws that are found in the corner, each corner of the back panel. So we'll take the first one out here. And then you'll find one in the same spot on the other corner. So the rest of the disassembly involves taking the uh, Phillips head screws out from the bottom of the case. So there's one in each corner, one under each foot, so that's four and six, ten, and then there's these three right in the middle of the, uh, the bottom panel. So 
So now at this point, the trick is just to get the uh, bottom panel off. You'll notice that it's pretty loose here. The only thing that's holding it up is that hex adjustment on this side for the expression pedal. So I found the best way to do this is to actually get the right side, as I'm looking at it flipped over, the right side off, and then I can slide it over and off of the top of that expression pedal nut that's right here. Because that's the, that's the hole where the expression pedal adjustment nut sits. So you just want to make sure that you get the panel over and off of the nut as you pull it off. So at this point we've zoomed into, if we have the unit flipped over the left side of the unit, and you notice it's nicely labeled pedal sensor section. Um, so actually if, if I zoom out here, let's see if I can do that. Yeah, there you go. That's kind of the idea here. Can even come out a little bit more. This right here is the, um, I guess you could say the hinge that the expression pedal rocks back and forth on. This is a little foot that comes off the bottom of the expression pedal. And then we're looking at the sensor section here. And in the back, there's a, another board under here. That's the toe switch section. So that's the part that functions well. Um, this here is where the problem seems to be. And actually, if I, if I lift the unit up a little bit and I move the expression pedal back and forth, there you go. You can see how that little foot with the white covering or white tape on it moves further and closer to the sensor section. So let me get back in. So apparently the guys that are in question are uh, right here. We have uh, one that's labeled D3 and one that's labeled Q1. Now, I can't take credit for any of this stuff because as musicians, where do we learn anything? We learn them from the online forums. So a few other people have had this same issue and there's a couple excellent forum threads on the topic. They're linked in the description below if you have the same problem. So apparently uh, Q1, I guess, is the receiver D3 is the one that should emit light and uh, when it emits light it reflects off of this white tape and as the white part gets closer or further the receiver picks that up and then the software figures out what percentage the uh, the rock of the expression pedal should be at so that's how it knows uh, which position you're in problem here is when I power the unit on I don't get any light coming off of D3. So apparently D3 is faulty. That's the idea here. Now one other place that we can test, and uh, I'll try this and I'll, I'll try it uh, while we're together here, is uh, just checking to see if there's any voltage that's coming across D3. And in a case like that, that should rule out maybe if there was more of a problem with the sensor board itself or if the problem is just isolated here to the actual LED. Maybe that the LED is not uh, functioning itself but the board is providing power to this location. So if I check with a meter I do end up seeing voltage across D3. Now the idea then, and this is where the tricky part comes in because I'm not particularly skilled when it comes to soldering but uh, the idea would be to take this D3 off the board, that LED, and replace it with another one and see if I can get the expression pedal to function. So that's what we're gonna try now.
definitely not the prettiest job. And I'm still not sure if I did it correctly just yet. But what I'm going to do is uh, power the unit up. And first of all, I guess we'll see if it lights up. And then we'll also check to see if there's any power across it if it doesn't light up. And see if I, I broke anything. <laughs> but let's find out. Well, that is pretty cool. That's a good sign. So right away it's lit up, and I guess we're just, uh, let's put the cover on and test it to see if it'll receive that light correctly. Okay, so here is the moment of truth. Turn the unit on. And I didn't save that preset, so let me just throw a uh, volume pedal on there. And there it is. So now I'm sweeping the volume pedal. Let me see if I could zoom in on it for you. So here we are sweeping the volume pedal after replacing that little LED and we're going from zero to 100%. Now that is pretty cool. Now of course, again, I'm not the best at soldering in the world, so we'll see how long that, that fix lasts. But uh, it's kind of cool to uh, have taken this guy apart. It was out of warranty. Um, this was not something that Line 6 was going to fix uh, for free. And it would have cost probably quite a bit of money to take it to an authorized service center. And uh, no one could give an accurate quote without um, actually seeing the unit. And that would have even cost money for them to take a look at the unit and give an estimate. So here we are. Searched the forums. Took it apart. And uh, that little LED was about between 2 and $3. So pretty cool little fix there. Again, um, this is not something that you want to do if your unit is within warranty because it's probably not a good idea to go in there and start taking things apart if it's under warranty. But in my case, this one's five years old and uh, it has a little bit of new life left in it, and we'll see how long it lasts. Thanks a lot for watching, and I hope this video was helpful if you have a similar situation.